Welcome to a String Dancer guitar video. My name is Jeff Foster and today we're going to get to know the fretboard. This complex grid of six strings and a whole bunch of frets we call a guitar at a very fundamental level is a vast mystery. One which in many ways will remain a mystery for the entire life of every guitarist. It could be said this is a good thing, for as long as there are secrets to unravel, we will never run out of opportunities to learn new things and elevate our playing. Every beginning guitarist, and the majority of intermediate players, and even many of the most stellar performers on our instrument, share one common characteristic. They either have never learned, or have a difficult time remembering the names of the notes they play on the guitar. Perhaps they know the notes on certain strings well enough to position their bar chords and scale patterns, but an ability to quickly identify by name any note on every string eludes them. We will tackle this problem with a combination of three basic concepts that won't take too long to memorize, but which, when combined, will make identifying any note on the guitar within two seconds or less easy as pie. The three concepts are a quick review of the 12 tone system, bass notes on the fifth and sixth strings, and octave patterns on the guitar neck. A quick review of the 12 tone system, every note available to us on our instrument. The most fundamental relationship in music is the octave. We can start on any note we want, then ascend in pitch from that note through every other available note on our instrument until we come again to the note of the same name one octave higher, and we will have gone through 12 notes in half-step increments, each equal in frequency difference from its neighbor. Check out this handy graphic I found depicting the chromatic scale as it appears on both piano and guitar. You will see that we have seven so-called natural notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that in between most of these notes we have what's called accidentals or chromatics, sharp and flat versions of the neighboring notes. This recurring pattern is probably best visualized on the piano where the pattern of white and black keys make this structure more obvious than on a guitar. Two things to remember about all this. Between most adjacent natural notes, there is a note which is the sharp raised pitch of the lower note or the flat lowered pitch of the higher note. Thus, most adjacent natural notes are a whole step apart. By the way, which of these names we typically use, flat or sharp, is mostly determined by the particular key in which we're playing. The two lone exceptions to the above rule are the natural note sets BC and EF. These are the two spots on the piano where there is no black key or accidental between them. And as you learn the notes on your guitar, the same holds true. This stuff is pure music theory and applies to any instrument you want to play. So the chromatic scale Every note we have on the instrument we're playing, whatever it is, starting from A, reads like this. A, A-sharp or B-flat, B, C, C-sharp or D-flat, D, D-sharp or E-flat, E, F, F-sharp or G-flat, G, G-sharp or A-flat, at which point we come back around to A and the cycle continues. Beginning from any other note simply rolls the note order around itself in similar fashion. Bass notes on the fifth and sixth strings. Knowing the natural notes on the fifth and sixth strings is of fundamental importance to any guitarist. In a practical sense, we need to know these notes to be able to position our bar chords and scale patterns on the neck so we can play in the correct key for the tune at hand. Here's a chart of the natural notes on the two bass strings. In standard tuning, the open sixth string is E, and the open fifth string is A. 
proceeding up either string, keeping in mind the construction of the chromatic scale we just covered, we can establish where the natural notes lie on the neck. Note that with the exception of the first two frets, all natural notes lay side by side. G and C at the third fret, A and D at the fifth fret, etc. All the way to the twelfth fret. Above the twelfth fret, simply apply the same layout as we did in the lower part. The accidentals, sharps and flats, will obviously occur between the natural notes on each string. They were omitted on the chart for the sake of simplicity and clarity. If you know your natural notes, the accidentals are easy to find. Octave Patterns on the Guitar Neck The location of all our octave notes is a handy thing to know. Being able to see all the octaves on the neck helps us in playing scales and chords, shifting key center, identifying intervals, etc. Very fundamental stuff if you want to master the fingerboard. And the good news is there are actually relatively few octaves to keep track of. And with a few easy to remember rules, developing a mental grid of them is fairly easy. Let's start with a basic C chord, one of the first open chords we all learn. The notes played by the first and third fingers are both C. Remember the relationship between those two notes on the neck. From C on the fifth string, go three strings over, two frets down or vice versa. Now here's a graphic of all the octaves on the neck oriented around the note C. Remember that the spatial relationships between the notes never changes but simply rolls around the neck centered on the particular note we're identifying. We'll go over the rules of how to navigate the patterns one by one. Here's octaves, basic C formation as outlined above. Note from the 5th string goes 2 strings over to the 3rd string, then 2 frets up. From that note go 2 strings over and 3 frets up. This gives you octaves from the 5th string to the 3rd and all the way to the 1st. Remember this, 2 and 2, then 2 and 3. Sidebar, the reason for the difference in the diagonal arrangement of octaves 2 and 2, then 2 and 3, is due to the deviation in tuning between the 2nd and 3rd strings, which is a half step less than the tuning between all the other strings. Sounds arbitrary, yeah, but it's this one little deviance in the tuning of the guitar that makes the instrument so accessible, easy to play, and navigate. Took me years to figure that out. Since the 1st and 6th strings are tuned 2 octaves apart, the name of the note we have on the first string is also the name of the note we have on the sixth. Now, from the sixth string, we followed the exact same formula as we did from the fifth string. Two strings over, two frets up. Followed by two strings over, three frets up. This takes you all the way to the second string, thirteenth fret. Here we have the two diagonal patterns combined. See the similarities? And guess what? You've gone up an entire octave on the neck from C down there on the second string first fret. From here on, the grid simply rolls around again, repeating itself on up the neck. And there you have it. Just a few little bits to memorize and suddenly you find the fretboard opening up to you in glorious ways. What can you do with this knowledge, you ask? You can take any bass note you know by name on the fifth or sixth strings and quickly extrapolate every note of that name anywhere on the neck. Conversely, you can be playing some unknown note up high in the string somewhere and quickly trace it back down to one of the bass notes you've memorized on the bottom two strings, thus establishing its identity. Conclusion Imagine you have a hundred friends, people you see every day and care about deeply, but you don't know any of their names. It would make remembering them, organizing them in your head, identifying relationships that exist or could possibly exist between them, even thinking about them in meaningful ways. A might difficult, wouldn't it? And yet guitar and other stringed instrument players do this every day in the context of making their music. We rip through riffs and licks and all the other ways of the hand without actually knowing what notes we play. Now, some players argue that the names of notes don't matter all that much. 
that it's all about intervallic relationships and well-worn patterns of play. And there's some truth to that. Not being able to identify the name of every note we play certainly doesn't mean our music suffers for that lack of awareness. Call me fussy, but I like being able to say hello to a note by its proper name, to treat it as well as I would any of my good friends, and in the day-to-day -day process of making my music, see how well that note plays with all the other notes, which I also know by name. As with human relationships, all this takes a little effort, but it just seems to me the respectful way to be with all these precious bits of sound that plays such an important role in our lives and music. This has been a String Dancer guitar video revealing the inner workings and unraveling the mysteries of this wonderful instrument we all love to play. I'm Jeff Foster, a lifelong professional guitarist and teacher. I've been teaching folks how to play the guitar and other stringed instruments for almost 50 years and have been on the teaching staff at three major universities and colleges. Today I work privately with students at my Lakeside studio in Brown County, Indiana and also do remote online teaching via Skype and FaceTime. If you'd be interested in studying the guitar, five string banjo or bass guitar with me, visit my website stringdancer.com and click on the music lessons tab in the menu bar. Thanks for watching, but really, shouldn't you be playing your guitar?